Will the Shadowlands expansion actually require a solid state drive? Will PC players finally be getting Ghost of Tsushima? And is Dragon's Dogma back from the grave? Hello everyone, my name is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs, where we cover the latest news, trends, and updates for the MMO and RPG gaming genre. We do love our coffee here, so if you guys got your cup ready, let's go over these news together. Cheers to you guys. Let's first go ahead and cover some of the articles from PCGamer.com. The first one here, Sacred Fire is a psychological RPG where manipulation and emotion are key. And this to me is really interesting only because it seems to really be focusing on achieving your objectives by reading the other person, seeing how they react and what their emotional responses are. Kind of like acting like a spy, if you will, more or less, if you're like interrogating somebody. And the first game that comes to mind when I read this is actually L. Noir, which is a game that I thoroughly loved. And in that game, you play as a detective where you actually get to ask people questions, interrogate them, and just kind of base your conclusion on who's guilty and who's not, depending on how they act and how they react to you. So this is really cool. And it goes on to read that Sacred Fire is an upcoming RPG set in ancient Scotland that uses a system based around psychological decisions and emotional development and gameplay. And as you can see, I have the trailer playing above me and it it's kind of obscure. It doesn't really give you a full in-depth gameplay as to how the sort of psychological decisions play out, unfortunately, although it does kind of give you an idea of the various choices that you have. And another game that I just thought of right now is actually Deus Ex, where you can actually skill into a feature that allows you to detect the person's heartbeat, perspiration, how they act based on their bodily movements and stuff like that, and kind of guess what they are prone to react to and stuff like that and so a game like this could certainly work if done well and it lastly says and yes that is the voice of doug Kokel on the trailer and i do hope i'm pronouncing his last name correctly he is known for playing Geralt of rivera in the witcher series and in their next article here's 12 minutes of the outer world's pearl on gorgon dlc gameplay and if this is a dlc that you want to pick up for the outer world it will be released on september 9th of this year and for our last pc gamer article for the day world of warcraft shadowlands minimum system requirements call for an ssd or solid state drive and as you can see here we do have the minimum specs as well as the recommended specs and it does say a solid state drive is recommended in its minimum requirements well is this true i'll cut right to the chase and towards the bottom of the article it does say that the general consensus in threads like this one on reddit is that shadowlands will run from a hard drive and as always i will have a link to this reddit thread down in the pinned comment section below if you're interested in looking at it and lastly it does go on to say that it will suck more because loading times will be much longer and you'll see more pronounced texture pop-ins unfortunately but again judging from that thread it looks like you'll still be able to play even without one i don't know why they would because solid state drives even though they're still getting a lot cheaper they're still really expensive compared to compared to your traditional hard drives and next let's go ahead and cover some of the articles from allchair.com and the first one here sony will be launching more games on pc report suggests and i do apologize it is cut off on the right there if you're watching this on youtube but it does go on to read that sony's corporate report has openly stated that they'll keep considering migrating their ip to pc platforms in attempt to further drive profit profitability wow can't even say that profitability profitability there we go <laughs> it just probably means i need i need more caffeine now, there are a number of players who are kind of upset by this, primarily the PlayStation owners themselves, because they argue that it's the exclusives that gives them the edge. And Sony did address that concern, and they did reiterate that their support for the PlayStation platform is going nowhere. And in their next article, we have Dragon's Dogma's director that is working on an open world game. And again, I do apologize. It is cut off there if you're watching this on YouTube. But it does go on to read that Hideaki Itsuno, the man who directed Capcom's big titles such as Devil May Cry and Dragon's Dogma, is working on a open world game which is created in the RE or Resident Evil engine with expanded features to support a more open 
design for its title. And this is really exciting news to me. I believe Dragon's Dogma is one of the most underrated RPGs. It came out roughly the same time as other RPGs such as Dragon Age, Mass Effect, uh, Diablo 3. And although I didn't really play a whole lot of it and I didn't even play the MMO version of the game while that game was still up, I still have tremendous fond memories of this title and so I'm really looking forward to whatever they produce. But it does go on to say that Itsuno's new game is apparently an open world title which suggests that it could be Dragon's Dogma sequel since an open world Devil May Cry game does not sound very realistic at that point. But as always this isn't official news so definitely take these rumors and leaks with a grain of salt. And next, let's go ahead and cover some of the articles from MMORPG.com. And the first one here, Last Oasis adds an exoskeleton this week. And I have to admit, I, I enjoy little news bits like this. I said it before and I'll say it again, I'm a huge mecha fan. At the very least, exosuits such as what you see in Anthem. And what's really funny about this exoskeleton is that it's uh, biodegradable, apparently, so it just degrades over time. And he goes on to read that the exoskeleton, which is set to arrive next week and has been implemented by popular demand from the Last Oasis community, protects players in combat and allows them to carry two ranged weapons in battle. The first thing I want to mention that I think it's really cool that the developers are actually listening to its community and implementing things that they request, so good on them for doing that. And the second thing is that if you don't remember anything about this game, this is the survival online RPG or MMORPG that requires players to gather resources and fight each other in a little sliver part of the planet that's in between a very hostile cold environment and a very hostile hot environment and, it always, and it's always shifting because the planet rotates. Next, let's go ahead and cover some of the articles from MassivelyOP.com. And the first one here, PvPVE Survival Battle Royale Shooter The Cycle is leaving early access and releasing on Steam in fourth quarter of 2020. There seems to be a trend where we are getting a lot of games that are very similar in nature, such as The Cycle, where it's a battle royale game that actually adds elements of PvE and RPG to it as well. Not too long ago, we had the announcement of another game similar to this called Hood. Not to mention we also had the release and then the unrelease of Amazon's game called The Crucible. But the article does continue on to say that for those who don't recall, the cycle bills itself as a first person shooter with a twist, that twist being a mix of PvE elements and PvP that brings to mind some of the beats of The Divisions 2 Dark Zone insofar as getting out of the map with your collected loot. That right there actually reminds me of Escape from Tarkov as well. And in their next article, Black Desert details September seasonal servers for PC and asks players to fill out a survey. So long story short, if you don't know what seasonal servers are, they're a special kind of servers where it actually allows you to level up a lot faster, even more so than the already established Olvia servers. And there will be special rewards and gear made specifically for these seasonal servers, allowing you to even uh, be more powerful as you level along. And this week we will also be getting the new Hashashin class that you could actually use for the new season server as well, so kill two birds with one stone. And lastly for MassivelyOP.com, Star Citizen devs outline future steps towards more persistent and meshing servers. And the main point that I want to drive here from this article is this little bit here, and it says, according to lead gameplay engineer Chad McKinney, most of the backend setup for iCache is largely complete with the devs now working to hook the system into Star Citizen's code. And that to me is really great news because this is part of the main reason why that you play this game. And let me explain, or let me explain to the best of my abilities because the tech itself is just so over my head, so bear with me. Imagine playing something very similar to Fallout 4 where you're in a world and you have thousands, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of items out there in the world where you could pick up, manipulate, leave, and do all sorts of stuff as you already know if you played the game. Now can you think of any other online game or MMORPG that actually has something similar in nature? As far as I can tell, there aren't any. 
Star Citizen is trying to change that where if you actually drop an item in the world, it stays out there in the world and you get some other people could pick it up or just toss it, blow it out of the atmosphere and it'll stay in the atmosphere for everybody else to kind of look at if they ever come across the item itself. So again, picture something similar to Fallout 4 in all its entirety, but an online version of that. And the possibilities are endless to be able to like, I guess, throw mugs at each other or something. I don't know. <laughs> and that's what iCache is from what I can tell. I'm not an expert in this sort of technology. Matter of fact, I'm not an expert in all things Star Citizen, even though I am a backer and I try to really closely follow what's going on in terms of their updates. And that concludes today's episode of MMO and RPG updates. I really do appreciate it if you made it with me so far because the watch time significantly helps with the algorithms. I really hope I have earned your subscription in today's episode. If so, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification icon right next to it. Anyways, everyone, I will finally let you guys go. Hope you guys have a blessed night and I will see you guys next time. Cheers again, everyone.